this is unacceptable. This is you not expecting them. Let me check the how long it took us to react. So we'll reasonably say that you register her here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Then you start moving your crosshair to aim at her. 25 frames at 60 FPS is nearly 500 milliseconds. Like there's, um, oh my God, 16.667 milliseconds per frame. You took 25 frames. This was your reaction speed to that guy. Is that really your reaction time? No, it's not. You're way faster than this. Everybody's faster than this. <laughs> you were not expecting them on an angle that you're holding, which is crazy. You need to. The moment you start holding an angle, you be, need to be like, enemy is coming. I know it for sure. And then there's enemy and you need to kill them. You're too slow. It like at full speed, it doesn't look that slow. People are like, oh, that Viper rotated across super fast. No, you have so much time to hit that shot. You have proof that anyone is faster than that. Sure. Let's check one of my VODs, you know, let's find a fight I get. Here we go. One, two, Wait, I'm going to be really greedy on myself. I'm counting this as frame one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And by frame 16, my crosshair's flicking up. 10 frames faster. 16 frames, 250, 260. Way more normal. Way more normal. There's your proof. This is me. I'm not a pro. You are radiant? No, I'm not. I'm a mortal one. I'm a mortal one 50% win rate. It's lower than 50%. You got wild reaction speed though. No, I don't. I average 200 milliseconds on human benchmark. That's like not crazy at all. Most people are around that range. 200 is super fast. Really? Cause the boomer I coach is like 180. 200 is not super fast. You average 270. Perfect. So you're 70 milliseconds. So you should have clicked that guy at 320 milliseconds in this clip. Our Viper clicked at 450. I can guarantee you that we weren't expecting that guy. Hey, did somebody approve their reaction time? You can't really. Trust me, your reaction time is not a problem. If your reaction time is under 300 milliseconds, you're fine. Your problem is that you don't expect them to peak you. And that really slows you down. That's what makes you slow. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join my official Discord over at discord.gg slash woohoojin. Here you can enter free raffles to win free VOD review live on stream. You can also support me with a premium membership, which unlocks access to private VCT restreams, professional player analysis, shared professional strategy channels, and much more. Enjoy the video. Yeah, hot take. Anybody who says things along the lines of like region X solo queue is better than region Y. It's like, what are you saying? Is there a LAN I didn't know about where we flew out players from each rank to compete head to head? Like all the evidence you need to prove that people can't guess the relative skill of a player just by watching them is Rankdal. Like you just go do Rankdal and you realize you can't tell how good somebody is from their gameplay. <laughs> they did that at Berlin a couple of times. No, they only flew out pro players, Pen Flash. People be out here saying platinum EU solo queue versus, I don't know, London or like London servers are better than Paris. Who knows? They make the weirdest statements. Oh, this is a different lineup than I use. Does that work? No, your your orb lands so far forward, dude. That hurts. We gotta fix that. Let me boot up Breeze. It's a 50-50 every time. No, 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 no. It's not. So what you need to know about jump throws is when you throw adjusts where the orb lands. Um, jump throws of this game are kind of finicky that way. Some orb lineups require an instant throw. Some required a delayed throw and how much you delay depends on the orb. So this Hall's orb is a little finicky, but the timing window is quite large once you get a feel for it. So I'll tell you the common indicator. So you line up here like you did. Now you aim here, the bottom part, not the top. And you throw when you intersect the slide. And if you throw too early, it's going to hit the roof and bounce down or maybe even just stick up there and suck. If you throw too late, it's going to bounce off this railing. And then in the middle, you'll get this variance that you're talking about. If you get a decent feel for it, let's see if I can hit it. Then you can usually get it pretty far back. Minus me doing it first try with no warm up. Look at me when all the pressure is on. He can't throw the orb. There we go. 
But yeah, you should have. Um, unfortunately, yeah, you submitted a map that's leaving rotation. I mean, that's on you though. Like, hey, you picked. But if you favor throwing a bit earlier, it'll usually go further back. Here, I actually hit this door, I believe, and it bounced back. Feels bad. Okay, it's your worst map. Yeah, but the mass leaving rotation. <laughs> okay, I can already tell you why this is a problem. Have you seen Have you seen my Viper Breeze Guide, Average? Because you're already deviating from it. I run forward. And I throw my line up. And now I will immediately orb up and start walking halls uh, insanely aggressively. Like, potentially knife out all the way up here. Okay? We're going to tuck in this corner. We don't want to use more than 50 of our poison. And ideally, normally our sofa's droning, our sky is dogging. We want to wait for that. Once that's done, the wall goes up. Okay? Okay, so that's what's in my breeze guide. And now let's watch our, our round. A, I don't think you know if we bought sofa drone or not. But now what part of this is insanely aggressive? Both. Now our timing's all off. Yeah, our timing's all off. If we were to open this door on my timing, uh, I'm going to unpause the timer. I usually get around here when we hit zero, so I'm just going to unpause here. The orb is usually up at this point. And now if my team's really coming out fast, I'll open the door. As explained in my guide. So it'll be like 124. Is like the earliest I can reasonably open it, which is way back here. While these fights are happening, while there's this dart that Chamber is having to shoot at, while your team's coming out aggressively, this is when the pressure's on and opening the door can be highly valuable. This is too passive. We're too afraid. You have to take some risk here. If you play this carefully, Halls, uh, you end up putting the whole round on your team's shoulders and it becomes really awkward. 124 new timing node? No. Um, that would only be a timing if everyone was on that type of timing. It's not the case. I'm so lucky. Is it fine to get a teammate to come Halls with you? Yep. Here, wait, wait, wait. I got, um, I can show you around. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. Viper player on his team. Pistol round. This is really recent. Like, I played this Breeze game a day ago. Okay, we can't see the minimap, which is less fortunate, but there you can even... There's my orb. You see my orb? That's lit. Uh, yeah, I'm just waiting this knife out. Hey, one right to do. <sighs> Here you can see, I'm tucked, because we're doing a mid-split. Uh -huh. Watch when we get picks, I'm, I'm running up. As the wall comes up and my team comes out, I'm running up halls, and you can see here I fight the jet halls. The moment my team is coming out, I um, step on the gas. So the team's playing slower here because it's only two way main. So I'm playing slower. So this style you're doing, this is more appropriate. And then fighting occurs and the cypher start running out. And bam, I'm, I'm in like Flynn. And you can see in the kill feed, I'm getting fights immediately as I start pushing. Then I open the door. So this door timing is much later. Me, me, me. I open so it's not like a specific timing window. It's more about when your team is aggressing A. And a lot of the time in solo queue, they aggress it very quickly, especially in this four of them. So if we look at the mini map again, you can see at this point, our Yoru is out. Like our Yoru is on site. And it's like, this is when I want to be here. We just have to be more aggressive. It's really close, but it's just a little slow. Is Sean Radiant? Um, I think he would be, but... <laughs> He's a little lax in solo queue, I would say. By game three of our duo, he started playing Reyna and talking to his chat and being like, this is nice. I queue with a nerd. He shot calls and I can just play Reyna. <laughs> hey, I'm glad to do it. It always works, this strat. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm wondering why we didn't explode B though. Normally after this pick, you just run tunnel. YOLO. It always works. One back side. Jeez. Okay, I don't like this. So we need some foresight here. Look at the two agents left alive. Look at the map we're playing and look at the round. These guys have marshals. Statistically speaking, these guys have marshals. You don't have armor. This is a long range fight. Don't hold it. It's not smart. And look what our jet just did. 
She just held a long range angle against Marshall and died. He didn't notice who's alive in the moment. So right here, then you needed to smell the roses. You're reloading. While you're reloading, there's absolutely nothing you can do if you get peeked. Like if you get swung here, you're dead. So while you're reloading, you should be looking at the mini map. You should be looking who's left alive. Where are my teammates? And we need to recognize these things. We need to be like, oh, it's Jet and Chamber. The A retakers, people on A always play marshals. And one bam. Oh, no. I see the moment that Marshall fires, you're like, oh shit. And <laughs> you reposition. And this is good as long as you don't peek out. Yeah. So this is what we should have done in the first place. Nice. Nice. And now you just want to try and live as long as you can because you're dead. Never mind. You're different. You're different. You're different. Okay. This is, um, you're trying to control the right part of the map, but we're doing it in a way that is weak. And let me try and explain. So you're concerned about this elbow walk, which valid, valid. They're on eco. You think they might push up. You know, it's not Cocoa. And so you're trying to control it. And let me postulate to you that I would want to control it closer or even from this type of fight. Let me explain. We are holding it from out here. You don't have any close cover. And the guy who ends up peeking you has close cover. They have a huge advantage because of this cover that you're effectively giving them in this fight. They can finesse the angle against you. And when a player has cover against a player who doesn't have cover, if it's equal guns, I generally call it 70-30, especially as you get higher rank. Like as you get closer and closer to Radiant, this guy is going to become even better at abusing that cover. So if you're going to hold elbow, you can hold from here too, because now you have cover. Or you can get closer to the corner where now if they peek around, you can kind of follow them. The cover is less of an issue because you're like equidistant from it. Or you can get up close and fight this way. So I understand why some people think it's a little unintuitive because you're thinking, oh, what? Get closer to the angle. But we don't have our bomb. I have the okay this is just pattern recognition but you don't want to plant here um we have full site control we have absolutely no util covering the flank they're on economic disadvantage we should plant back site everyone's been here you've planted and then you've died to this guy right here who peeks you window or um it can throw elbow it it's like highly likely And you even calmed it. You said maybe one flank. Planting the bomb and praying they don't shoot you in the back is not a viable strategy. Look at the main map. You got lucky. You got lucky. You see? He always knows. Right side, right side. <laughs> both of them. Both of them are here. Both of them. One enemy right. remaining. One right if you know the last one's right side, you should just molly this guy. Secures the kill. Makes him less likely to get one of you. Oh, but you're wrong. I also was surprised you thought he was right side. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It's spy round, right? Let me... But do you check the economy now? Yeah. You should throw this vandal to your buddy who died and buy an op. It's op time. Oh, that's such a good dart. Um, we need to rewire ourselves a bit here. So when we get tagged by that dart, your default reaction was bad. Let me explain. The Viper player who calls for that dart a lot of the time positions themselves this way so that they can swing and get maximum coverage on the tagged players. When you get tagged here, you need to be aware of that. And you want to try and like hop around this corner. Quick cover because they got wall hacks on you. And you see you kind of stay out in the open. You're just a free kill. Fortunately, they shoot at your friend. Yeah, your orb has given this guy too much room to play around. Oh, okay, okay. We convert. Oh, shoot the dart. What? What the? Oh, you're crazy. Um, walking out like this is just so risky. And we have huge numbers advantage. The reason it's risky is because this is called a 50-50-50-50. Once that orb goes down, there's a 50 here. But there's also 
a 50 here. And so the angle that you choose to hold is a coin flip. And then whether or not you win the fight is a coin flip. Thought I love gambling? I do. This is a bad gamble. Loving gambling and all inning with 2-7 offsuit are two different things, okay? <laughs> just because I love to gamble doesn't mean I love to just take arbitrary risk. Yeah, loving gambling is like loving trying to identify the highest EV play. I got a close left. Could be in the... Same idea, same idea. Yeah, we're, we're baiting the shit out of this Sova too. So your Sova starts looking to walk up to take elbow. Your gut reaction needs to be to follow this guy. It has to be to play a uh, refrag for this guy. If he's about to swing a dangerous angle and contest some space. Our default reaction cannot be to just peep the flank in this scenario. If we wanted to peep flank, we should have peeped it earlier. At this point is follow our homie time. And you can see, we basically threw the round, bam. There's chamber. That chamber gets a free shot on our sofa, can usually TP away, goes untraded. Our EV sucks here. We need to play what's called like wingman here. Our movement, by the way, is we got to look at this. So our jet swings past right titty. So at this point, if they were to swing back here, they actually see us first because our jet has unexposed the angle. So our jet has swung across and she's here, doesn't see right titty and you're swinging and you're holding your diagonal peeking. Have you been doing deathmatch with that knife bind? Because if you haven't, you should be. I recommend this to quite literally everyone. Equip melee weapon, add W. So if you ever diagonal peek, it pulls your knife out and punishes you. You have to AD peek. Get up close gun, AD. Knife, AD. This type of movement is way more important than you realize. You don't notice it when you watch higher rated players play, but they really do pretty much only expose highly likely danger with A and D. You only diagonal peek if you expect no one to be there. I'm going to try and change your mind on this. So there's a systems of equations. You either think no one's there or you think there's greater than or equal to some N percent chance that someone's there. So in this first case, it's knife out then. Nobody's there. Where, why are we ever gun out? We're losing time. There's a decent percent chance somebody's there. Well, then gun out A and D. A diagonal peak should be something that only occurs when the enemy team has kind of coerced us into the position or we have multiple um, teammates with their crosshairs trained on the angle. But here, we're the only ones who can have a crosshair trained on right titty. That's the only one we don't see. And let's keep going. So here, we need to continue playing, I call it like wingman, just like second man. So our jet is most exposed to these leftmost angles, which makes us most exposed to the rightmost angles. So our crosshair should be here now. Our crosshair needs to be here. Because if they go to peak from here or here, they see jet first. It's geometry. So your crosshair needs to be here for this guy. Yes, and now look how our crosshair comes out for doors. How do you walk up though? You, you pull the knife out. You unswing the danger and you peak the next fight. So the movement, it looks a bit unpolished to me, and especially the crosshair placement while you're just walking up. It should be here and it should be here. Like diagonal is all right in this situation as Sage comes behind us. But the crosshair really needs to be trained on the right angles. Watch how you come out the doors again. Like it's really, really sloppy, really sloppy. And here, we, we have our gun out and we're peeking this. And that's a full uber diagonal peek. You see? Do you think they can be here? Because why do we have our gun out? If you think they can be here, then you don't peek it like this. That's ugly. You think they can be here. You like, you get further back and you expose the threat. And you're like, okay, you think they could be there? You have to be really disciplined with the way you can test these types of angles to keep your odds of winning these fights maximized. Okay, perfect. What? We know they're yellow. What? Enemy there's, is a. there's a yellow. There's the yellow com. Ah. One enemy. There. Uh. What are we doing? Our team's contesting B. Our jet's contesting elbow. And we are pinging the bomb site. You're setting up lineups at 133. You're like, you'll play here during the round while there's fighting going on and your team's taking space. You're trying to set up your lineup. Your stage plans anywhere, but not where you want them to. Time and place, time and place. This is where you tell them. Uh, let's go be again. Let's go be again. Yo, Sage, can you please plant on this ping? 
Yo, Sage. Can you please plant the bomb in this ping? Yo, Sage. Please plant the bomb in this ping. Hey, Sage. I'm going to need you to plant the bomb in this ping. Hello, Sage. Please plant the bomb in this ping. And bam, now we're playing play, with the team. Play. Now we're playing with the team. We're following that jet. What is this? No, the round started. There's a fight. We should be with this jet right now. Time and place. You don't mid round shot call in this game. The only time you'll mid round shot call is you're like rotating to prep for a retake or you're canceling a hit and going to hit A. Like when there's downtime and a lot of it, you can try and coordinate and make some comms. But the moment shit hits the fan, the round starts, there's fighting going on. You you don't comm stuff like you'll plant here. It's it doesn't work in solo queue. And she's dead. And you don't deserve that trade. You don't deserve that trade. Your jet shouldn't have died. However, that Reyna whiffed a million shots. You need to tell that jet that you juggled her gun. No. Be careful swinging full noise. So you know this guy's here. They've fallen back. And you know what happens in... This has happened to all of you. So this concept is actually really easy for me to explain. And you'll understand the problem. Do you know when the guy in deathmatch is crouched in the weird angle and you round the corner and they one tap you off noise and you're like, what a piece of shit. Why is he practicing that? Well, this is why he's practicing that because you're about to peek him full noise and give him a free one tap. So you know that he's around that corner with a sheriff. All you need to do, and you'll notice this now, when pros peek this corner like that, they'll make full noise up to here. Then they'll stop like there because the guy's about to shoot and then they'll jiggle like shoot. So they're going to like full sprint up, tip their gun out and then like readjust like that. And it just owns the guy because this guy here is like clop, 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 clop. They see the gun, they go bam, and then they get swung. And they're like, oh God. So you need to anticipate what this guy's trying to do to you. You're lucky that's a real reload. How many sheriff shots did he shoot? One, two, three, four, five. He doesn't have to reload. That's what I thought. It's unlikely in our elo we're running into people who are this smart, but people do this. People do this a lot. They'll tap reload and pull their gun out to try and bait you into peeking them full noise so that they can bop you. They tap reload and pull their gun out just like this. And that makes a full reload noise to the, my enemies. Just like that. Just R and then I pull my knife and gun back out. And this guy over here hears the full sheriff reload noise. He thinks, oh, I'm reloading. And he goes to swing me. And then bam. We gotta be, we gotta be a bit more careful. Of course, that guy's just dumb. You don't hear the weapon pull out sound? Nope. Uh, this plant is a really dangerous. Our sage wall is not kind of for us, and people spam this type of plant all the time. Yeah, this is tricky. Viper ult's always a a hard thing to play around. Flank, flank, flank. Okay. <laughs> okay okay there's no way this is ascendant bro <laughs> cope 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 harder okay when you're in your viper ult and your viper ult is pretty bad like it's like this um you get the bomb planted and you don't have like a good place to stand like you can't talk anywhere because you have to leave the viper ult you need to envision where they're most likely to spam which would be like straight along this axis and then straight along this axis those are the two most common spams. So Here. this way Here. and this way. And then you want to put yourself off axis to both of those. So that would put us standing just arbitrarily like here. Up against this wall where they can't come behind us. And we're kind of chilling from all the spam nonsense. We're not going to get spammed here. There's such a common angle for Vipers playing. Exactly. There's a reason it's common. It doesn't get spammed. I play here and I don't get spammed. You're super chilling in this type of angle because it's really weird. The terrain is not linear. So this guy spamming along the terrain is not hitting you. He's not hitting you. You always spam that corner in particular. Yeah, you ping specifically like here, here and you like My heck and shoot. Sorry, sorry. It's over here. I didn't even ping the corner right. Here. Sorry, I'm not, still not pinging the corner. right. You can't even ping it. You can't even ping it on the mini map.
this is unacceptable this is you not expecting them let me check the how long it took us to react so we'll reasonably say that you register her here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five then you start moving your crosshair to aim at her 25 frames at 60 fps is nearly 500 milliseconds like there's um oh my god 16.667 milliseconds per frame you took 25 frames this was your reaction speed to that guy is that really your reaction time no it's not you're way faster than this everybody's faster than this <laughs> you were not expecting them on an angle that you're holding which is crazy you need to the moment you start holding an angle you be, need to be like enemy is coming i know it for sure and then there's enemy and you need to kill them you're too slow it like at full speed it doesn't look that slow people are like oh that viper rotated across super fast no you have so much time to hit that shot you have proof that anyone is faster than that sure let's check one of my vods you know let's find a fight i get here we go one two i'm gonna be really greedy on myself i'm counting this as frame one Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And by frame sixteen, my crosshair's flicking up. Ten frames faster. Sixteen frames. Two hundred fifty. Two hundred sixty. Way more normal. Way more normal. There's your proof. This is me. I'm not a pro. Whoojin, you are radiant? No, I'm not. I'm a mortal one. I'm a mortal one fifty percent win rate. Lower than fifty percent. You got wild reaction speed though no i don't i average 200 milliseconds on human benchmark that's like not crazy at all most people are around that range 200 is super fast really because the boomer i coach is like 180. 200 is not super fast you average 270 perfect so you're 70 milliseconds so you should have clicked that guy at 320 milliseconds in this clip our viper clicked at 450. I can guarantee you that we weren't expecting that guy. Hey, somebody approved their reaction time? You can't really. Trust me, your reaction time is not a problem. If your reaction time is under 300 milliseconds, you're fine. Your problem is that you don't expect them to peak you. And that really slows you down. That's what makes you slow. Come younger. Now, JPC's got faster reaction time than me. He's 40. Sometimes the enemies will peak you at unexpected times. That's true. But we were ADS holding an angle, Mello. If we're not expecting them to peak while we're ADS holding an angle, then it's a mistake. Don't think you should be stuck in this corner with Sage. Really? I like it. Because the idea is if Sage dies, we're like, they think uh, Bricks is clear. Yeah, watch, watch. You guys are all out here like, whoa, he's not that fast from Hujin. Watch. Yes, he is. When he's expecting them, they get creamed. We'll be aggressive on his timing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, exactly 16, just like me. The same speed as me. I'm not magic. I'm not like, oh, I'm radiant. You can't replicate what I do. He reacts at the same speed when he's ready for them. Stop coping. He pre-fired for sure. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Offense, you failed. I didn't see any of this, and I need to move this defense note over. what is that wait dude what's the point of watching my breeze guide if you guys just do your own thing he's not even throwing my molly yeah this molly goes here with a jump and you run this way you follow it and as it lands you peek this angle this gets me so many kills because this guy gets forced into peeking and they're vulnerable and you just wha-bam Okay, we're stacked, eh? On eco, I like it. Ooh. When that arrow's coming, I actually prefer walking into the orb. Right here. Instead of mollying it, I like walking in. Because when that tag happens, conveniently, this proves my point. Not looking at you, not looking at you, not looking at you. There's like one guy's shop, I think, looking kind of at you. Oh, you're better. This is exactly what I'm talking about. You're better. Yeah. 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 W Riz. W Riz. What happened to her? Hmm. So our Yoru here is playing this close angle. We've got this orb be main, but we're running out of poison. 
So I get it. I get it. You're worried about B-Main. I can't blame you. The orb comes down. But I really want us peeking it like this because it lets us stay close to this Yoru to play off him. And after you peek it like this, you kind of can just gamble and play off Yoru. You really don't want to gamble. You come over here, and play off Yoru. We can't just leave this guy hanging because he's in pain and he's low HP and we need to try and get value out of his life. Um, yeah, watch back my guide. I don't like throwing this Molly when we still have decent control of right titty. Instead, I liked getting hauls real fast and joining the team real quickly. This Molly is unnecessary at this point. One enemy remaining. Okay, so this is just a pro tip. When you're in the 2v2 and it converts to the 2v1 like this, and you have tons of time, get off the bomb. Get off the bomb. This Sova will never think that you're not sticking. They're always going to check at this point. And so we should get off the bomb and 2v1 this guy because he's going to assume that you're sticking. And there he is. And if we were off the bomb here, this kill is secure. If we're still on the bomb and our Yoru loses the fight, we've entered a 50-50. Okay, okay. Let's take our notes. Let's take our notes. Thank you. Five. 